Two keys to success, preparation and acclimation. The content for this podcast comes from my book, Advanced Success Secrets. You can get a free copy of each of my eight best-selling books at alexhammerbooks.com. That's A-L-E-X-H-A-M-M-E-R-B-O-O-K-S dot com. Two keys to success, preparation and acclimation. Because of the law of attraction and like attracted to like, as we mature psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually, and continue to evolve, we will attract higher and higher quality individuals and opportunities into our lives. That's the good news. Life is perhaps always difficult, in at least some sense, because we keep rising up to ever higher and higher levels of challenge. As Josh Meyer says, quote, new level, new devil. End of quote. Because as we evolve, we are continually placed in increasingly difficult difficult positions and situations, parentheses, and relationships, end of parentheses, that we have faced before, parentheses, for example, higher levels of responsibility or relationships with more mature and higher functioning individuals, end of parentheses. Of course, they are going to be challenging and difficult, but here are some more good news. Not only do the challenges increase in difficulty, but our resources to be able to deal with them increase as well. So we acclimate to a certain degree. This notion of acclimation explains why we can do more and more and have more and more without it feeling any different over time. Whatever level we are at over time, if we adjust to it, becomes, as they say, quote, the new normal, end of quote. So the major candidates for president, for example, they don't run out of a national debate screaming, Quote, I can't handle the pressure, end of quote. Most of them, if not all who rise to that level, have had a good deal of experience dealing with the press, including national media. The reason, they are, the, the reason that they are leading presidential candidates is that they are currently or previously generally have been governors or senators or successful business people or some other acclaimed role in the public eye. So running for president after doing one of the, or more of those things is parentheses, especially if you're doing it for the first time, into parentheses, definitely a step up, but you have a foundation of experiences upon which you are prepared, to some degree, to successfully meet the challenges which you will face in this endeavor. If you weren't, then yes, running out of the national debate screaming would probably appear to be your best option. The notion of acclimation also applies to money. Most of the rich were not always rich, parentheses, although some were, into parentheses, Perhaps they, as a teenager, became used to a few hundred dollars a week from a part-time job. Perhaps after college, they secured the first full-time job, parentheses, depending upon the field, end of parentheses, for $40,000 per year. Perhaps 10 years down the road, they were making 100000 And then 10 years after that, a million dollars a year, parentheses, including from their investments, end of parentheses. So it happens over time, and you get used to it, even dependent upon it. Sometimes. If you're making a million dollars a year for a while, they'll go down to half a million. You might feel poor. So, that few hundred dollars a week that seemed pretty good when you're a teenager, parentheses, hey, I bought a new bike. Or for some, a, quote, new car, end of parentheses, end of quote, after new. Seems pretty meager as you get to the higher financial levels. So we trade in our expectations based upon our circumstances and history. Acclamation can also set into our relationships. They say that what is familiar is taken for granted, and this can be true, but this is generally the case for what is, quote, too familiar. If relationships are growing stale and not changing or growing, then yes, we can get bored with them pretty quickly. If they are dependent type relationships or, or exploitative, or if we are dependent or exploitative individuals, then yes, the same could easily occur. It is famously said that we always want what we don't have, and also that we don't appreciate something until it is gone. Certainly there is power in the context of loss, but mature individuals appreciate what they have very much. It may be the value of, valuing of it, of it, in fact, that helped to bring it into one's life in the first place, and keep, maintain, and grow it. As was discussed in The Laws and Secrets of Success, uh, note to podcast, that's my prequel to uh, Advanced Success Secrets, Everything in life either grows or dies. That is a well-recognized principle. 
This applies not only to individual endeavors, but to relationships as well. So to apply my dad's maxim to relationship, if your relationship is not moving forwards, then it is moving backwards. This is not to apply that we should be in a sense of striving in our relationships or dissatisfied. Clearly, enjoying what we have and the fruits of our relationship efforts is important. But there is a difference between this and a sense of complacency. We can certainly enjoy something, but at the same time, it is important to remember not to hold on to something too tightly. Doing so can kill the spirit of the thing that we are seeking to maintain. Two famous quotes come to mind. The first is, quote, kisses aren't contracts. And the second is, quote, a ship is safe, parentheses, I mean, safe in, parentheses, the harbor, but that's not what ships are for. Well, all ships in this life, parentheses, hopefully not passing each other in the night, but we can't anchor ourselves nor our relationships to, to shore, as tempting as that may seem. When things are good, we don't want to lose them. But, it, but as Gibran so poetically reminds us, quote, and think not you can direct the course of love. For love, if it finds you worthy, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. And kisses are in contracts. Have you ever slipped into, quote, after all I've done for you phenomenon? It is easy to go there, but generally unhealthy. Just as Gabrard also said, and just as po- poetically, he is so amazing, quote, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughter, it's probably daughters, of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. So also in a sense is your spouse, not your spouse. We are each, we each have independent minds, destinies, and souls. Some people come together for a moment, some for a while, and some perhaps for a lifetime. But they do so through choice. Do not think that you really have the power to control someone who does not want to be controlled, whoever that person may be. A wise person knows this well.